So hi friends welcome to our latest video, where we'll be discussing the concept of the center of the universe. From the Big Bang to present day observations, we'll take a look at what scientists have discovered so far. The center of the universe is a concept that lacks a coherent definition in modern astronomy, according to standard cosmological theories on the shape of the universe, it has no center. So what is cosmological theory? Cosmological theory is area of science that aims at a comprehensive theory of the structure and evolution of the entire physical universe. Modern cosmological theory's present models of the universe hold two fundamental premises the cosmological principle and the dominant role of gravitation. Now let on move to our topic. Historically, different people have suggested various locations as the center of the universe. Many mythological cosmologies included an axis mundi, the central axis of a flat earth that connects the earth, heavens, and other realms together. In the 4th century BC Greece, philosophers developed the geocentric model, based on astronomical observation, this model proposed that the center of the universe lies at the center of a spherical, stationary earth, around which the sun, moon, planets, and stars rotate. With the development of the heliocentric model by Nicholas Copernicus in the 16th century, the Sun was believed to be the center of the universe, with the planets, including Earth, and stars orbiting it. In the early 20th century, the discovery of other galaxies and the development of the Big Bang theory led to the development of cosmological models of a homogeneous, isotropic universe, which lacks a central point and is expanding at all points. So what is Big Bang theory? The Big Bang theory is the leading explanation about how the universe began. At its simplest, it says the universe as we know it started with an infinitely hot, infinitely dense singularity, then inflated, first at unimaginable speed, and then at a more measurable rate, over the next 13.8 billion years to the cosmos that we know today. Milky Way's Galactic Center as Center of the Universe Before the 1920s, it was generally believed that there were no galaxies other than the Milky Way, see for example the Great Debate. Thus, to astronomers of previous centuries, there was no distinction between a hypothetical center of the galaxy and a hypothetical center of the universe. In 1750 Thomas Wright, in his work An Original Theory or New Hypothesis of the Universe, correctly speculated that the Milky Way might be a body of a huge number of stars held together by gravitational forces rotating about a galactic center, akin to the solar system but on a much larger scale. The resulting disk of stars can be seen as a band on the sky from the Earth's perspective inside the disk, 17, in a treatise in 1755, Immanuel Kant elaborated on Wright's idea about the structure of the Milky Way. In 1785, William Herschel proposed such a model based on observation and measurement, 18, leading to scientific acceptance of galactocentrism, a form of heliocentrism with the Sun at the center of the Milky Way. The 19th century astronomer Johann Heinrich von Madler proposed the central Sun hypothesis, according to which the stars of the universe revolved around a point in the Pleiades. The Non-Existence of a Center of the Universe in 1917, Heber Doust Curtis observed a nova within what then was called the Andromeda Nebula. Searching the photographic record, 11 more novae were discovered. Curtis noticed that novas in Andromeda were drastically fainter than novas in the Milky Way. Based on this, Curtis was able to estimate that Andromeda was 500,000 light years away. As a result, Curtis became a proponent of the so-called island universes hypothesis which held that objects previously believed to be spiral nebulae within the Milky Way were actually independent galaxies. In 1920, the great debate between Harlow Shapley and Curtis took place, concerning the nature of the Milky Way, spiral nebulae, and the dimensions of the universe. To support his claim that the Great Andromeda Nebula, M31, was an external galaxy, Curtis also noted the appearance of dark lanes resembling the dust clouds in this galaxy, as well as the significant Doppler shift. In 1922 Ernst Opik presented an elegant and simple astrophysical method to estimate the distance of M31. His result put the Andromeda Nebula far outside this galaxy at a distance of about 450,000 parsec, which is about 1,500,000 light-year. 
Edwin Hubble settled the debate about whether other galaxies exist in 1925 when he identified extragalactic Cepheid variable stars for the first time on astronomical photos of M31. These were made using the 2.5-meter in, Hooker telescope, and they enabled the distance of Great Andromeda Nebula to be determined. His measurements demonstrated conclusively that this feature was not a cluster of stars and gas within this galaxy, but an entirely separate galaxy located a significant distance from the Milky Way. This proved the existence of other galaxy. We put a lot of effort into making this video, and we hope you found it informative and entertaining. If you did, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing to our channel, and sharing this video with your friends. We're always open to feedback, so don't hesitate to leave a comment below and let us know what you think.